Hey everyone, this is Josh with another Bitcoin and blockchain tutorial available at chaintuts.com. And today we're going to be talking about quantum computing and cryptocurrency. So we're going to discuss a little bit about what quantum computing is and the effects that it might potentially have on the cryptocurrency networks that we use and love. We're also going to talk about some of the ways that we can protect these networks against vulnerabilities that might exist in the future due to quantum computing. So first, what is quantum computing and what makes it different than regular computing? Well, I'm really not an expert on this topic. I, I don't understand too in depth what is going on when it comes to quantum computing but I do understand a bit about what makes it different than regular computing and the problems it might cause for crypto. In regular computing, everything is ultimately represented as bits. So computers use a binary system where all data is represented as either zero or one. So within a processor, within computer memory and storage, all data, including this video, is really different encoded forms of bits, long strings of zeros and ones. And when a processor does computing, it changes those bits uh, between zero and one to do different forms of arithmetic and computations needed uh, to do those interesting algorithms that we need. Now with quantum computing, it turns out that bits can be represented as a having a state of zero or one at the same time. It's an interesting property of quantum mechanics that allows a bit to have two different states that ultimately can be read and processed in a quantum computer. What this ultimately allows that we're concerned with is it allows for much, much faster computation than our normal computing uh, can offer. So normally when you go through an algorithm that requires a bunch of steps. So for example, say you were going to try to find all of the possible private key, public key pairs in order to crack one, you have to do that in a linear sequential fashion. So you can do one guess at a time and you have to then change those bits in the processor and try again, repeating the same process over and over again. With quantum computing, uh, because of this property of bits being able to be zero or one at the same time, you can go through the computations much, much faster. Now, what this means for the building blocks of Bitcoin is it may affect the cryptographic algorithms that Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies are built on top of. Cryptocurrencies are built on top of hashing algorithms such as SHA-256, script, ripe MD160, or KEKAC, and more importantly in the context of quantum computing, they are built on elliptic curve digital signature algorithms. Hashing algorithms, it turns out, are not vulnerable to quantum computing, or at least not the hashing algorithms that we're concerned with in Bitcoin, such as SHA-256. The way that these algorithms are designed, there's nothing special about quantum that allows them to be brute force guessed, reversed, or anything like that, any faster than they could be with a normal computer. However, elliptic curve digital signature algorithms used for transaction verification and for addresses uh, are vulnerable to quantum computing. So remember that when you generate a Bitcoin address, you start with a private key, you get a public key and then a public key hash, which is ultimately your address. And when you create a transaction to send Bitcoin funds to someone else, you use a digital signature that uses your private key to prove that you're the owner of those uh, public key funds without ever having to reveal the private key. Now with quantum, it's possible to break the ECDSA algorithm uh, in an in a amount of time that would render it non-secure, unlike it is now with normal computers. Um, with only normal computers, even the world's best supercomputers in the picture, it would take well beyond our lifetime and even the lifetime of the universe to brute force guess to try to break an elliptic curve key pair. But with quantum, we could have a problem with this. 
So there are some solutions that can prevent this from becoming a problem for the cryptocurrency space. The first is an interesting but simple stopgap measure that we could use uh, while the developers figure out a longer term solution. And that simple solution is avoiding address reuse. Remember again that a Bitcoin uh, public address is not actually directly the elliptic curve public key. You start with a private key, you use the elliptic curve algorithm to generate a public key, and then you run that public key through a hashing algorithm, such as SHA-256, to get your final address. Those hashing algorithms are not vulnerable to quantum computing, and they are one way. So you can't go backwards from an address to the regular public key without doing a bunch of brute force guessing, which is beyond the scope of what normal computers can do. And so uh, in a quantum space, we could avoid problems for some time by simply avoiding address reuse. Because when you receive funds, you receive funds to your address, which is that public key hash, but you don't reveal what the actual public key is that underlies that address until you go to spend those funds. So if you only use an address once to receive funds, spend them, and then never use that address again, you don't have to worry about somebody uh, using a quantum computer to crack your public key to get your private key and therefore steal your funds. So again, by avoiding address reuse, we avoid that problem with uh, a quantum vulnerability because we're using the non-vulnerable hash function to shield our public key um, from the eyes of potential thieves. Now this really isn't a great long-term solution because unfortunately most people do use uh, addresses more than one time. I'm even guilty of this sometimes. It's not a recommended practice, um, even without quantum, because of privacy issues. So really, ultimately, we need a true fix for this problem. And thankfully, we can simply hard fork our cryptocurrency network to a new software version and use a digital signature algorithm that is not vulnerable to quantum computing. So right now, we use an ECDSA algorithm, a sec P256K1 for its particular properties that the Bitcoin developers like. However, we could switch to one of many digital signature algorithms that are not vulnerable to quantum computing. So in the future, we have that option. And while the developers are exploring the appropriate uh, hard fork upgrade with a new cryptographic algorithm, the great news is, is we have time. Quantum computing is in its baby stages. It's fascinating and has a lot of potential, but it's just not there yet in terms of being able to break important cryptographic algorithms. It's not just Bitcoin that we have to worry about, but many of the other uh, encryption and digital signature applications that we use every day, such as HTTPS when you go to an internet website or you know, encrypting your bank information on the back end. It's really going to be important that uh, developers figure out solutions to this quantum problem, but we have time to do so. There are lots of issues yet with the amount of quantum bits that can be handled by a computer because of difficulty reading that state that's in superposition between 0 and 1. We have a long time before this is potentially a problem, but we are going to have to be forward thinking with our cryptocurrency software. Uh, whether it's Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, Ethereum, or Digibyte, or many of the other cryptocurrencies that are out there, a lot of them are potentially vulnerable to quantum computing, and the developers will simply have to work together with these crypto communities to upgrade that software uh, to deal with this new and interesting future. So as always, I want to thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting and informative, and I hope you learned something new with me today.